time is now. When people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires. And will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. Imagine somebody who is desperate, want to hear about a preacher who is talking about a woman covering the hair. That's what they will be searching for. So when they come to your platform, you are not talking about a woman taking your earrings or necklace or whatever. They, they think you are, you, are, you are the one who are flossed. So they are always looking for people who will be talking about take your earrings off. Take your necklace. Then they know he's the one talking the truth. That is the time we are in. They follow the things they want to hear. Verse 4 says, They will reject the truth and chase after myths, chase after stories, chase after things that will not help them. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. When I tell others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. So beloved in the Lord, that is the time we are in now. We thank God for another uh, important time you know to share the word of God with you tonight I want us to learn something uh it's something very common just that we have not we haven't, we haven't paid attention it's something we have all witnesses we have witnesses one we have witnessed it one way or the other and we actually may have asked ourselves why are these things happening this way or why are things going this way tonight i want us to discuss about something like i said it's very practical you have seen it you have heard it and you have seen people actually doing it why do we have different interpretation of the bible why do we have different explanations Different, different uh, doctrines, you know, to the same scriptures, to the same Bible. We are believing the spirit of the Lord to help us uh, to make things very simple so that we can all understand. And by the end of the day, we want the spirit of the Lord to help us so we can come to a point so that we can all begin to uh, get into the word of God, not just by what somebody is saying. Because, beloved, as you have seen, and as I've seen too, there is a whole lot of confusion in the body of Christ. But what we don't realize is that this is a big disadvantage to the work of evangelism because if i'm unbeliever and if i look at what is happening there's no way i'm gonna believe in your jesus because if i'm unbeliever i will see that you are you people are even confused you don't even know what you believe beloved this is serious you hear uh denominations fighting against other denominations a uh, different belief system fighting against other believers because they disagree on some issues. But tonight or this morning, whatever the time may be in your area, we are believing the Holy Spirit to help us so we can clarify things. I believe this may not be all the reasons, there may be more reasons, but. We are believing the Spirit of the Lord to help us to touch on the major important reason why we have so many interpretations of the Bible. Why do we have so many explanations of the Bible? Beloved, I believe you have been thinking about this and I've been thinking about it too. 
and it's making Christians to be the most confused people on the planet. Because when you talk about Muslims, they believe in one thing. When you talk about Buddhists, they believe in the same thing. When you talk about Sikh, every Krishna, El Kanka, all those uh, religions that we look down upon them, they believe in one same thing. They have a core belief system. Yet we claim that we are the right people with the right truth. Yet we are the most confused people on the planet. The most confused people on this planet are Christians. Why is it so? We want to try and touch as many important points as possible as we are led by the Spirit. And I believe if you pay attention and then you listen, we can all learn something. Because many a times when people hear you talking, they don't want to listen because they don't belong to your denomination. Because you don't belong to their belief system. That is the problem. When they hear you talking straight away, they have certain things in their mind. Because you are not part of their doctrine, they disqualify you. And that is the question we want to try and touch. Why do we have many Bible interpretations? When it comes to Jesus, we all believe we have one Jesus. Isn't it right? Christians, because if you don't believe in Jesus, if you don't believe we have one Jesus, then you cannot be a Christian anyway. We believe we have one Jesus. We believe we have one Holy Spirit. We believe we have one Father, one God. But why do we have different interpretations of what the Word of God says? Beloved, have you ever pondered about this before? If you have not, I have pondered. And I know many, many Christians have been pondering about this. Why do we have many interpretations? You hear at one time somebody will say, And God said to me, I shouldn't do this. And then another time, another believer will say, And God said to me, I should do this. What is happening? The same thing that one believer believes that God tell him, God told him or her not to do. Another believer is also claiming that God told him or her to do. Are we not confused? Are we not confused? For instance, when we have various elections going on, that, that's also another, another, uh, another, how do I be? <laughs> That's also another problem, big one. Look at elections going on now. We just finished the US arm. There are other go uh, elections going on. You hear two men of God. One is saying Donald Trump will win. Another one is saying, God said to me, uh, Joe Biden will win. Beloved, what kind of God are we serving? Are we serving the confused God? Are we serving a God who doesn't know? Maybe he says something to just the quantum and then he forgot and told me something different. Are we saying that is how our God is? He says something to one person and then he forgets and tells another different thing. Is that how our God operates? That is why we are we, that is how we are making our God to operate. How can two how can two prophets? One is saying Donald Trump will win. Another is saying Joe Biden will win. And they are all claiming God spoke to them. That is where I have a problem. They are all claiming that they are prophets of God. And they are all claiming that God spoke to them. You see, it comes down all the way from the prophetic level. And then it comes all the way to the teaching level. That's what it is. 
It comes from the top, from the prophetic level, and then it comes all the way to the teaching level. Because Christians are the most confused people on this planet. You can disagree with me, but that's the truth. That is the truth. That is why we have many interpretations to what God has said in his word. Now, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.16, I want, to, I want us to open our Bibles and read it, if you can, please. Now, 2 Timothy 3.16, the Bible says, All scripture is given by the inspiration of the Spirit of God. In other words, all scripture is breathed out by God, and the Bible says, and it's profitable for teaching, for reproof, or for rebuke, for correction, and for training. In righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. Beloved, the Bible says, all scripture, all scripture is the breath of God. In other words, the author of every piece of scripture is the Holy Spirit. Beloved, I want us to learn something tonight. And I want you to pay attention. Let's pay attention and let's listen to something tonight. Let's learn something tonight. Now the Bible says, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. So number one thing I want you to understand is that the author of the Bible is the Holy Spirit. There's no debate about that. There's no argument about it. And listen, until you understand and then you believe that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible, you can never understand scriptures. You can never understand the Bible. I want to say this again. Until you come to the realization that the Holy Spirit is the author of the word of God, you can never understand scriptures wow because let me give you an example i have a book in my hand this book is a welcome holy spirit the author is benny Hinn. i know many of you have written uh good has has read good morning holy spirit and then his second uh, in relation to that book is a uh, welcome holy spirit now the author of this book is Pastor Benny. So nobody, listen to me carefully, nobody can explain this book better than the author who is Pastor Benny. Are you listening to me? So if you want to understand, let's say you've, you've read something here and then you don't understand the best person to contact for him to explain and to break things down for you to understand is Pastor Benny. Now listen, your pastor may try to explain what Pastor Benny has said, has written in his book. He may get it wrong. It may seem right. It may seem genuine, but it may be wrong. Because in the mind of the author, the author may be meaning something different. So beloved, beloved, the only person who can and who can explain a book is the author. The only one who can explain what he or she has written is the one who wrote it. So if the Bible says that all scripture is the breath of God, according to 2 Timothy 3 16, if the Bible says that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible, then the only teacher of the Bible is the Holy Spirit. The only one who can make you understand what the Father is saying is the Spirit who wrote the Word. Like I just explained to you, that the author of this book is Pastor Benny, so the best person to explain this book to you is himself. You can try to assume, 
Oh, he, I think he mean this. I think he was trying to say this. I think he was trying to bring this way. And that's what we are doing to the Bible. We are trying to assume things that God didn't say. We are trying to uh, 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 assume. We are trying to put things where God did not say that. That is why we have problem in the body of Christ. We have many, 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 many interpretations of the same word, of the same author. Beloved, you can never explain a book better than the author. You can never understand a book better than the author. It's not possible. You cannot understand it better than the one who wrote it. You know, we understand this when it comes to natural perspective. But when it comes to spiritual perspective, we miss it. We understand that in the natural perspective, every author knows what is written. But then when it comes to the spiritual realm, when it comes to the things of the spirit, we miss it. We don't realize that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. And therefore, he is the best person to explain what he has written. Now, the scripture makes us to understand in Ephesians 4, 5, that we have one Lord, one faith, one baptism. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Where is the division coming from, beloved? Let's read it. Ephesians 4, 5. Because tonight I want us to, I want you to see from the Bible the things we are doing that we think uh, we're trying to, you know, make things. Now the Bible says, one Lord, one faith, one body. Let's take from the verse 4. It says, there is one body and one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Let me read the newer version so you can understand it well. It says, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope at your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, one God, and Father of all. Read Ephesians 4. Let's take it from verse 4 to 6. Ephesians 4, from verse 4 to 6. The Bible makes us to understand that we have one Lord, we have one faith, we have one baptism, we have one God and Father of us all, who is above all. So, beloved in the Lord, I want to ask you a question. If we have one Lord, if we have one faith, if you have one baptism, why is the division coming from? Why is the division coming from? We will come there. I want us to take it slow by slow. Step by step. So we all can understand. Remember, 2 Timothy 3, 16, the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. The Bible says all scripture, not some, all scripture is given by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. By the breath of God. So the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. Very, very, very important. Very, very important. Because when you don't believe that the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible, you can never understand it. That means you will try to understand. But remember this. 
Jesus said in John 6, 63, that the words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Beloved, the word is a spirit. The word of God is a spirit. So you can never explain spiritual things from physical perspective. So, it is not possible for anyone who is not connected to the Holy Spirit to explain the mind of God. That is why we have different theological theories. Because the word is a spirit. So when you don't have the spirit of the Lord, you can never explain what the Father is saying. You can only assume. You can only assume. Assumptions becomes your leader. But beloved, you cannot explain the word of God with assumptions. You can't explain the word with assumptions. Because the word of God is so serious. Because the word is God. Maybe we haven't paid attention to that. The word is God. You can't play with the word of God. You can't play with the word of God. Now, in a perfect world, every believer will study the Bible. You see, in a perfect Christian world, let me put it that way, every believer is meant to study the Bible. But what are we, what are we seeing now? Many Christians don't study their Bible. They don't study the Bible. You know? Some don't study. In fact, many, 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 many don't study the Bible. And also, when you study the Bible, you must do it in a prayerful way and also dependence on the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. The Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. So, in simple put, the main reason why we have many, many interpretations is that we don't consult the author for him to explain what he has written. Now, let me give you, let me give you, a, let me give you, a, a, I mean, a scenario. Let me give you a scenario. Let's just say you are a teacher and then you have a class of 30 students. When you have a class of 30 students, you have taught them the same thing because you stood in front of the class and then you taught the, I mean the whole class. But then when it comes to exams and then the same 30 students who received the same tuition, the same tuition, the same time duration. When you put down your question for them to answer, you realize that out of the 30 students, each of them will write different answer. Why is it so? That is what is happening in the body of Christ. I want you to think about this. You have 30 students in a class who have been taught the same thing, but then during the time of exams, when, when a question is put, when a question is given, they write different answers. Now, I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Now, the main reason is that many, many of the students, they just listen, they didn't hear. I believe you, I, I wish you understood what I just said. They listened, but they didn't hear. Now, many, many, many of us we listen to the word, but we don't hear it. The Bible says, faith cometh by hearing. It didn't say faith cometh by listening, because listening and hearing is not the same. You can listen to something, but when... <clears throat> You can listen to anything, but you hear with your spirit. Now, 
When the Lord, when Lord is talking to you, you can never hear the voice of God with your mind. You listen to God with your spirit. This is the problem with many believers because we listen to the word of God with just our ears. But your ears can only listen, but you hear with your spirit. You hear with your spirit, but you listen with your ears. Your ears, your ear is, for, is part of your soul. In other words, you listen with your soul, but your spirit is what needs to hear what God is saying. Because it is your spirit that connects to God, not your soul. Your soul is not the one that connects you to God. It is your spirit. That is why the Bible says that they that worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. So, based on the example I just gave you, about 30 students in a class who received the same tuition, but then when it's time for exams, they write different things. Why is it so? It is so because of how they all heard, how they listened and they heard. Very, very, very important. How they listened and how they heard. Because you can never write or you can never say anything you haven't heard. Are you listening to me? For instance, you can't speak a language you don't know. A language you haven't heard. You can't speak a phrase you haven't heard. So many of us, even though we read the Bible, we don't hear what God is saying. Many of us, we listen to sermons, we listen to preaching, we only listen, we don't hear. Because you listen with your ears, but then the Spirit of the Lord is the one who will help you to hear what God is saying. This is a problem in the body of Christ. We have neglected the author of the Bible when it comes to studying the word. But like I said, you can never explain any book better than the author. Because the author, he wrote his mind. He wrote what he wanted to write. In fact, the author will write what he means and he means what he wrote. In other words, if you want to understand anything any author has written, you need to consult the author. Don't assume. There's so much assumptions in the body of Christ. That's why we have so many divisions. Welcome to our failure. We're learning something. That's why there's so many divisions in the body of Christ. Because others listen to the Spirit. And then the Spirit will help them to hear. While others completely ignore the Spirit. And then they go around arguing and forcing people to believe. And say, God said. God said to me in a dream. God said to me in a vision. So beloved. We have so many interpretations. As to what God has said or as to what God is saying. The question is, why should it be so? Because the Bible says we have one Lord. Ephesians 4, 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Why must we, if we have one faith, then why should we have different interpretation? Why should we have different doctrines? I'm not that I haven't been a Muslim, but as far as I know, I know they have one faith. So Muslims in Mecca, Muslims in Nigeria, Muslims in America, they have this simple thing. They, when it comes to unity, they, have, they are more wiser than the people of God. Why should it be so? Why? We have one faith, one Lord, one baptism. You go to Pentecost, they have things they do. You go to assemblies, they have things they do. You go to Methodists, 
they have things they believe and that's they think that is the right you go to zion they have things they believe and they think that's the right you go to uh any other seventh day they have their belief and they think their belief is right yet we are all serving the same god are we serious are we kidding are we serious we are not serious because we don't even know what we are doing. There's so much division in Christianity than any, any other religion. You check it. Check it. There is more confusion and more division in the body of Christ than Muslims, than Hindus, than Hare Krishna. Why should it be so? We are meant to be more wiser. We are meant to be more united. We are meant to be more clear with our belief system. Yet, we are the most divided people on this planet. All is based on one thing. All is because we fail to consult the author for interpretation of what he has said. That's simple. Like I, like I explained before, that the author of this book, Welcome Holy Spirit, is Pastor Benny. So you, there's no way you can explain this book better than him. It's not possible. There is no way you can explain this book better than Pastor Benny. He is the author. Why do we think we can explain the Bible better than the Holy Spirit? Why do we think we can explain the Bible? We can know the Bible better than the Holy Spirit. When the Bible has said, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. All scripture is given by the breath of God. Now let's, I just want us to consider some few, uh, some few things. One reason is that Many of the people that when we see them talking or when we see them preaching, many of them that we think they are Christians, some of them, are, in fact, many of them are not even born again. There are many people preaching the gospel who are not born again. I was amazed to hear a testimony of a man of God in one of the women of God's uh, crusade. This man has been a pastor for 38 years. But he wasn't born again. He was a pastor of a large church, so-called mega church, for 38 years. He didn't know Jesus. So don't assume that anybody who is preaching is born again. Don't think that anybody who is preaching the gospel is born again. Many, 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 many so-called apostles, prophets, pastors, evangelists, teachers of the Bible. Many, many of them are not even born again. They are not born again. They have no encounter. They haven't had any encounter with Jesus. They are not born again. Now, in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, I want us to read something there. 2 Corinthians 2.14. Let's read something there. 2 Corinthians 2.14. You know, it's so important for us to take our time and uh, go through the word. Uh, sorry, it's 1 Corinthians 2.14. 1 Corinthians 2, 14, not 2 Corinthians. I just wrote it wrong. Now, 1 Corinthians 2, chapter 2, verse 14. You see, the first point I was saying is that many people who preach the gospel, many people whom we assume they are Christians, they are not even born again. So, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, Anyone who is not born again cannot. And let's read the Bible. The Bible says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, 
for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Now let me read the newer version. It says, But the person without the spirit does not receive what comes from God's spirit because it is foolishness to him. Because it is foolishness to him. He is not able to understand it since it is evaluated spiritually. So the first point we need to understand is that it is not anybody that you see preaching the gospel that is born again or that have the spirit of the Lord. And if anyone doesn't have the spirit of the Lord, you can never understand scriptures because the Bible or the scripture is the bread of the Father, is the bread of God. In other words, the Holy Spirit is the author of the Bible. So you need the Holy Spirit to understand the word. To understand the word. Because he is the author. So without the spirit of the Lord, without being born again, you become a natural man. Because it doesn't matter how many years you've been in church. It doesn't matter how many years you have been praying. It doesn't matter how many years you have been praying. If you don't have the spirit, you are just a natural man. Because the Bible says in Romans 8, 9, that if you don't have the spirit of the Lord, you are not his. You don't belong to him. Beloved, the spirit of the Lord is what? He is the one who makes you a child of God. It's not because you preach. It's not because you have scarf. It's not because you are wearing a gun. No. It's not because you've taken your jewelry, your necklace and stuff. No. It is the spirit of the Lord that makes you a child of God. Now, because of this doctrine issues, now people, like I say, a lot of this denomination, they have now stopped preaching Jesus and they are preaching dressing. Is that a gospel? They have stopped preaching Jesus. Now, the dressing has become their God. The dressing, their outward appearance has become their God. This is one serious thing that studying the Bible without the Spirit can bring into the body of Christ. Because when we read and study the Bible without the Holy Spirit, we tend to build our own doctrine. And then we try to look for scriptures to support that God said to me. Beloved, you can build a doctrine and build followers, but if it's not from God, it is not from God. You can have 10 million followers. If it's not from God, it's not from God. So, like I said, anyone who is not born again or anyone who does not have the spirit cannot understand the word. Cannot understand the word. I didn't say he cannot teach. Yes, he can teach, but he will teach you wrong things. I didn't say they cannot preach. Yes, they can preach. But they cannot preach the mind of God. They cannot preach what the Father is saying. And that is a problem. They can teach you, but not what the Father wants you to hear. That's why we have... Uh, I've taken time and I've spoken to a couple of people. And I explained to them... 1 Corinthians 11 never said anything about a woman putting scarf on your head. That is not what that word, that scripture was saying. I've spoken to a few people. And, I've, and I explained to them that the Bible never said that. But let's just say, you start in a ministry and then you say, okay. In our ministry, we want the woman to be one. Therefore... We suggest all the women put a scarf on your hair. That's different thing. You know, you're building something to help people to serve God. 
But one thing that annoys me is when people sit on Facebook, it's when people stand on their platform and say, God said, that is where I get problem. That is why I get a problem because that's not what God said anyway. He didn't say that. He didn't say that. And they would debate. And God said, every woman must put on scarf. But that's not what God said. You see, the problem that can come into the body of Christ when we try to explain scriptures with our knowledge, with our intellect, that's what happens. So the first important point I want you to understand is that no one without the spirit can understand scriptures. Very, very, very important. Because we have people who are very fluent. They can quote scriptures. They can quote scriptures. Yes, you can quote scriptures, but you can't understand them. You can quote scriptures, but you will misinterpret them. You can quote scriptures, but you will mislead people. Why? Because... You are not reading through the mind of the spirit. So you cannot understand what the Bible is saying. You cannot understand what the spirit is saying. So you try to assume. God is trying to say this. And we're trying to, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to uh, give words to God. That's right. We're trying to give words to God. Presuming and assuming. You know, God is trying to say this. He's not trying to say He said this. He's not trying to say it. Very, very, very important. Now the Bible says, Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. So beloved, the word of God. Now, Jesus said, You shall know the truth, meaning it is one. The truth is one, it is not two. So, the same God cannot say earrings is wrong, and then the same God will say earrings is okay. It is not possible. Are you listening to me? It is never possible. Now, what make God God? What do we think God is? A mocker? A joke? That anytime you go to heaven, all that he shows you is women shouldn't put on earrings and necklaces? Are you kidding me? You think God doesn't have any business doing? There are souls perishing. People are dying and going to hell every day. That is why Jesus came to die. And all you can dream of, all vision you can have is, you know, a woman, take your earrings or take your nails. And that is your message. Is that a message? Is that a gospel of the Lord Jesus? That is not even a gospel. It's not a gospel. It's not even a message. Two days ago, I was, uh, you know, I just opened uh, my browser. And then I came across a lady who was going to board a plane. And she was refused, you know, to board the plane because she was inappropriately dressed. She was showing her nakedness. Now, these guys were not Christians. They were not born again. This is something, this is something normal. This is something, you know, every rational, intelligent man will know. Now, a lady cannot dress this way into a public. This dress should be in your bedroom with your husband. You can't bring this one into an airline. So they gave her the option. She either cover up or she won't board a plane. And since she wants to board a plane, they give her something to cover. Beloved, you don't have to be a Christian to dress decent. This is moral. So if all your message is about dressing, then you fail Christ. Because when you go to the Arab world, they dress from head to toe. But they are not born again. So if all your dressing, is, if all your message is about appearing, you have failed Jesus because Jesus did not die so you can change your clothes. Jesus did not die so you can change your world group. He died so your soul can receive salvation. If your message is not about the salvation of the soul, 
You have failed Christ. You have disappointed him. Because you are not listening to the spirit of the Lord. What is the spirit? What is the father saying to the church? And this critical moment of the period of the calendar season of the church. And all your message is don't wear earrings so otherwise you go to hell. I one time hear one and I said this guy something is wrong with him. If we're a man you have an, a boy you have a line in your head you're going to hell. Is that a message? Deceiving people. Putting fear in people. That's what it is. Putting people back into bondage. Because when you put a line here, it has nothing to do with what is inside here. Nothing. And they go around debating, arguing. If you have an earring. Now, one of the evil teachings that the Bible has said that in the last days, we're going to have evil teachers telling people not to marry, not to care about marriage. Beloved, those of you who think because of holiness you can talk anyhow to your husband, you think because of holiness you can just ignore your, ignore your husband because you want to go to heaven. Now let me tell you something. If you, hmm, if you are not submissive to your husband because of holiness you go to hell. If you think because of holiness you can, you can, you know, you can uh, be stubborn to your husband. Because you want to go to hell, heaven. No, you're not going to heaven. You're going to hell. Because read the Bible. He said, woman, be submissive to your husband. As the church is submissive to Christ. So you cannot tell me because you are, you are a holiness woman. You want to go to heaven. So your husband is unbeliever. When your husband tells you something, you just ignore him. And you just abuse your husband. From, from what I heard last time, it has gotten to a stand that the women, some of the women, they want to go to heaven. So now they don't even want to give their body to the husband anymore. And you want to go to heaven? No, you're going to hell. You're going to hell, not heaven. Check the spelling. It's not the same. Maybe you didn't check the spelling. Heaven is H-E-A-V-E-N. And hell is H E W L. You're going to H E W L, not heaven. Check the spelling. This is why I want us to get understanding of this. Now, the bottom line of this teaching is that whenever any man of God, I don't care how many years they can be in ministry for a thousand years, whenever any man of God tells you something, write whatever they have said. Put down the scriptures. Go back into your house and check. We are too lazy. Very lazy. That's why we are being carried away with any false doctrine. Any false deceptive doctrine. So. Like I said, the Bible says. If you. Don't have the spirit of Christ. You cannot understand scriptures. So anybody. And I mean anybody. Can read the Bible. Listen to me carefully. Anybody can read the Bible. Anybody can preach. But it is not anybody. Who can preach the mind of God. It is not anybody. Who can preach what God is saying. Anybody can preach, but the only ones who can preach what God is saying are those who heard from the Spirit, what the Spirit taught them. Because the Word of God is a spirit. It's not an ink. It's not an ink. It's a spirit. So for you to understand what the Spirit is teaching, you need to connect with your spirit. Your spirit that has received the Holy Spirit has to connect. In other words, you have to depend on the Holy Spirit to understand scriptures. Don't let anyone come and tell you, I had a dream, I had a vision, I had a dream, and God said, and God said, let them keep it to themselves. Write whatever quotation they are given to support. So let's just say, let's just say, 
What they are saying doesn't have a scriptural background. You have the Holy Spirit in you. The Bible says the Holy Spirit bear witness with our spirit. So when, whenever you hear something as a child of God, if you are in tune with the spirit, whenever you hear something, the spirit of the Lord, the spirit within you will bear witness for you to know that this testimony, this vision, this dream is false. It's not from me. You can easily know. Don't ask me why. Because I know that the spirit will let you know. The problem is we don't connect to the spirit of the Lord. We don't connect to the spirit of the Lord. So like I said, an unrepented person, anyone who is not born again cannot explain the scripture. Beloved, they can preach and cry. They can preach and shed blood. It doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. I have seen people crying. You see they are like God is falling down. But they are not spiritually. They have something else. They have something else. You know, so the people say, anyone who is not repented and then with the spirit of the Lord cannot understand. For instance, as I'm talking now, as I'm talking now, in order for you to understand whatever I'm saying, now listen, you can listen to me, but you may not understand. Why? Because what I'm teaching you is a spiritual thing. So in order for you to understand, it is the Holy Spirit that is in you. And then the Holy Spirit that is in me is helping me to communicate. So when you allow the spirit that is within you, he will help you, number one, to listen. And then number two, he will help you to hear. And then when you hear, that is when faith is built. Because the Bible says, faith coming by hearing. It didn't say faith coming by listening. When we read the Bible, we need to ask certain questions in our spirit. Who is God saying to? Who is God speaking to? Why did he say this? And how did he say it? So, faith doesn't come by just listening. It comes by hearing. Now, hearing is after listening. See, some of these things, I thank God because the Spirit of the Lord helped me to understand some of, some of these things. I'm not a scientist. But he helps me to understand some of this thing because listening and hearing is not the same. You can listen, but not hear. It. You know how sometimes somebody's talking, somebody's talking, your mind is, mm, 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 mm. and then the person, oh, did you hear me? Of course, you heard the person talking, you listen, talking, but your, your spirit was somewhere. So the person can see you are not you are not paying attention. He goes, are you listening to me? Then he goes, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. What did he say? Beloved, it is time we switch on our spirit. Like last week, we learned a lot. Beloved, your spirit is so important. It is your spirit that makes you a being, a human being. It's not a body, it's not a body. So I pity people when they spend all their time talking about their body. Which is not even you. It's just a container. A container. It's like a, you have a, uh, how do I say? Let's say you have a safe in your house that you, you've kept some, you know, some dollars in there, some pounds in that safe. Let's say one million dollars you've kept in the safe. So when you take that one million from that safe, that safe is not important anymore because what the value, the valuable item that you kept on that safe, you've taken them out. 
That is what it is. That, that is what it is. When your spirit comes out of the body, the body is useless. The body, the body is useless. I want us to continue because I want us to learn something. So what I, what I want you to understand is that it is the Holy Spirit. Only the Spirit of the Lord can make you understand. Only the Spirit of the Lord can help you to hear what God is saying. It doesn't matter whether it's through preaching, through teaching, or through you uh, studying the word. You can only hear, you can only hear when you allow the Spirit of the Lord. Otherwise, you can only listen. And that's why people go, they go from church, you know, they finish it and they go, oh, today church was so good. The message was, oh, you know, the pastor preached so well. You ask the person, what did the pastor say? Or they'll say, oh, he preached so well today. The message, oh, you miss, you miss it. But you ask that person, what did you receive? What did you receive from that message? No. Because he or she was there, but the spirit wasn't prepared to receive. The spirit of that person wasn't even in that room. You know how you can somebody can be in a room, in a church, and then the spirit will be shopping. No? <laughs> From church, I've seen one Gucci bag. It's in this shop. Oh, I, be, I know today there will be a discount. So... After church, straight after church, the person sitting right in the church, you and he's looking at the face of the pastor like he's listening, but she's shopping. She is shopping. The spirit is shopping from shop to shop. From shop A, I go to shop B. And oh, I saw the other type of the bag there too. You know, I'll go there, there will be discount as well. And I'll go and shop, I'll go and buy that one. The person is in the church, but the spirit is shopping. Have you seen how it is? How serious it is? So now, we have so many interpretations of the Bible. When it was only one author. God bless you, brother. When there is, there is only one author. It's only one author, beloved. If we believe that the, the, the Bible, the scripture... Is the breath of God. If we believe that God, the Holy Spirit, is the author of the Bible, then nobody can explain what he has said. I want you to listen carefully. I want you to listen and listen carefully. No one can explain the Bible than the author himself. So in John, the Gospel of John, John 16, John 16 and verse 13, I want us to go there. We spent a whole session on that verse. You need to understand only the Holy Spirit can teach you the word. Now in the Gospel of John, the Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 13, now the Bible says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. In other words, he will teach you all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. Now, in John chapter 16 and verse 13, Jesus said, when the Holy Spirit comes. So, after the day of Pentecost, when the disciples received the Holy Spirit, he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you. Now, what is Jesus saying here? What Jesus is saying is that, trying to learn the word, trying to understand scripture, who sees the moment the Holy Spirit comes. Now, the moment the Holy Spirit comes, you can never know scripture without him. 
You can never understand scriptures without him. So what Jesus is saying in John chapter 3, 13, uh, 16 and 13 is that when the Holy Spirit comes, in other words, the moment you receive the Holy Spirit, you cease to try to uh, do him. You cease to try to please God with your own strength. That's what it is. You cease to try to know scriptures with your own intelligence. With your own intelligence, you know. Because you are educated. Because you can pronounce any word. Beloved, the word of God is, has nothing to do with uh, your education. Because the word of God is not science. It's not physics. It's not biology. It's not mathematics. The word of God is a spirit. The word of God is a spirit. It is a spirit. So, you can only understand spirit when you are in the spirit. You can only understand him. Now, he said the same in 1 John 2.27. Let's read it. 1 John chapter 2, verse 27. And I want to read it. Uh, the New Living Translation, I love the way he explains it. He says, but you have received the Holy Spirit. And he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. Beloved, I want you to open your Bible and read it. This is so lovely. This is so lovely. Now, let me clarify this. That doesn't mean he's actually not referring to uh, like a Bible teacher teaching you a Bible. You see, these are some of the things. For instance, you can read this scripture and build a doctrine that you don't need a pastor, you don't need a teacher, you don't need anyone because the Bible says if you have the Holy Spirit, he will teach you all things. But that's not what he's saying. See? So he says, but you have received the Holy Spirit and he lives within you. You So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. In other words, in other words, when you hear the word of God, when you hear the word of God, the spirit in you is what will convince you to know that this is true. That's what he's talking about. So now that I'm talking, allow the Holy Spirit that is in you to let you know. He will let you know, no, Brother Mark is lying or Brother Mark is telling the truth. He will give you that inner conviction. He will give you that inner awareness, that inner comfort that this message is true. That's what he's talking about. This is what he's talking about. That the Spirit of the Lord will give you inner comfort. So the Bible says, but you have received the Holy Spirit. And he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true. First John 2 27 is one of my lovely scriptures. I love it. It says, For the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. Mm. Beloved, look at this in your Bible. It says, For the Spirit teaches you everything you need. To know. And what he teaches is true. Beloved. How important. Yes it will be profitable Richie. How important it is. For us to get into the word. Through the spirit. In 1 John 2.27. The word of God. The Bible. Makes us to understand that you have received the Holy Spirit. So, now this is the thing. It means if you have not received the Holy Spirit. If the Holy Spirit is not in your spirit. How can you understand what the Father is saying? How can you understand scripture? Remember last week we did some practical uh, explanation. Of our spirit and the spirit of the Lord. I used two, two, uh, 
two glasses of different uh, liquid. And I join and I, I put the two together. Because when you come into Christ, you have your spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes into you, he doesn't live separately. He joins your spirit and then your spirit is, uh, yeah, your spirit becomes infused with the Holy Ghost. Your spirit joins with him and it becomes one spirit. Your spirit connects to the spirit of the Lord. And he becomes one with the Holy Spirit. So in 1 John 2, 27, the Bible says, you have received the Holy Spirit and he lives within you. So you don't need anyone to teach you what is true for the Spirit teaches you everything you need to know. <clears throat> and what he teaches is true. It is not a lie. So just as he has taught you, remain in fellowship with Christ. So you see the problem? It is a spirit who will teach you. So, why then do we have different interpretation, different explanation to the Bible? The answer is simple. The answer is very clear. It is because, it is because many Christians are not studying the Bible by the leading of the Spirit. And let me warn you one other thing. Many people, especially those of us from the third world, from Africa, many of us, I want to make it clear to you, that many of us, we read the Bible and then we interpret the scripture with our customs, with our culture. Beloved, God didn't write the Bible for Ghanaians who, he didn't write the Bible for Nigerians. He wrote the Bible. The Bible is for the children of God, for the global church. Are you listening to me? The Bible is not for Ghanaians. The Bible is not for Nigerians. It is not for Jamaicans either. The Bible is for the body of Christ. You can't sit in one corner and say, this is what God is. You know, only us, we know the Bible. Because you don't even understand scriptures. Somebody will sit somewhere and build a doctrine. Oh, God said to me, all the women should, all this silly is because we don't study. We don't study. That's why. Tonight, I want the Spirit of the Lord to open your understanding, to enlighten your understanding. Don't just fall for any, any so-called, I mean, holy, holy, what do they call it? Holiness movement. What do you mean holiness movement? Holiness and righteousness movement. Yet they go. They were. I was listening to one brother. He was hosting a program, and he, he allowed most of the women who has been, you know, who has been a victim of this so-called holiness movement, and most of them were giving a testimony. They, you know, the bottom line is most of them don't even respect their husband because they think I am going to hell. Oh, I am going to heaven. So I don't want even to give my body to my husband. You're not going to heaven. You're going to hell. You're not going to heaven, you're going to hell. Because you don't even understand scriptures. And these guys, these guys are misleading a lot of women to come out of their matrimonial homes so they can take advantage of them. So they can take advantage of them. Beloved Esadu, it's sad. But we thank God. He has given us privilege to encounter the truth. And that's why by the grace of God, I want to share these things with you so your, your understanding will be enlightened. So, the Bible says, the spirit of the Lord that is in you is the one who will teach you. So, does it mean you don't need to listen to preachers? Does it mean you don't listen? You don't need to listen to your pastors? No, that is not what the Bible is saying. Now, what it means is that 
after hearing, after hearing your preachers, your pastors, the visions, the dreams, you need to go home and allow the spirit of the Lord within you, allow the spirit of the Lord within you to bring the truth out of that message because the spirit is the one who will make you to know this is true or not true. You can't just make a list. Christianity is not a religion. No. You can't make a list. If you wear earrings, you're going to hell. You wear a necklace, you're going to hell. You have a line in your hair, you're going to hell. You wear, you wear a pant, you're going to hell. That's silly. That's not, even, that's not even scripture. It's not even Christianity. That's religion and occultism. Are you listening to me? That's religion and occultism. It's not Christianity. Now, do you know do you know the degree of how this thing is taking people to hell? Because what it is, let me show you something here. Now, pay, pay close attention. They always want to defend that you need to take your earrings out. Otherwise, you're going to hell. So now, they have completely ignored the message of the cross. And they are talking about their belief. You know, you need to take your earrings out. Now somebody saying this is the, uh, the the cream I use, so use it. Beloved, open your eyes. Oh. Allow the spirit of the Lord to open your eyes, open your understanding. Let me ask you a question: Have you ever thought about it? Why are they always debating, arguing about? Those outdoor things that won't go anywhere. Have you pondered about that? That's why they always argue. You know why? That is their God. That is their God. Because they think I've taken my earrings. I've taken my necklace. I've taken my ear, my ring. I'm going to heaven. You're going to hell if you don't give your life to Jesus. You're going to go to hell. Because your earrings... Your necklace and your ring has nothing to do with your salvation. That is one thing you don't get it. I know after saying this, those uh, ignorant people who don't want to study the word, they will come and say, you want the woman to dress anywhere, anyhow. I just told you a woman who is not born again was going to board a plane. She was in the same dress. They didn't even allow her to board a plane. So what makes you think as a child of God, as a daughter of Zion, what makes you think that you can dress anyhow? You can't dress anyhow. And I've always told people who listen to me that allow the spirit of the Lord. Even when you want to dress, when you get into your wardrobe, you ask the spirit of the Lord, what should I wear today? He will tell you what to wear. I'm serious. He will tell you what to wear. And one of the things that baffles me is that they spend all the time talking about earrings, you know, necklace, natural hair, natural whatever they call it. But their words are not change. Their words are not change. All filthy language, filthy communication. Disunity. Hatred is full in their hearts. When you don't believe what they believe, they hate you. When you don't say what they say, they don't like you. And they claim they are filled with the Spirit. Are you filled with the Spirit? Are you serious? Second Timothy 2, 15. Second Timothy 2, 15. Beloved, I want to, you know, I want to annoy you. So you can get on your feet and study the word yourself. It doesn't matter even if you hear somebody preaching. And I've always said this. That don't just take because Brother Mark said. No. Take because after I said you went home and you did a research. You went home and double check in the Bible. Because sometimes you know what? Sometimes. Somebody can give a scripture, but the explanation, I remember one time a man of God was preaching and he said, 
Never say Holy Ghost. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. And then he didn't say anything about that. He didn't explain that. Now, when you go to Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, it doesn't say anything about don't say Holy Ghost. You see what I'm talking about? He quoted that scripture and said, never say Holy Ghost because if he say Holy Ghost, it is wrong. So he quoted Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. He didn't explain. Now, when you go to that verse, you find out that Genesis chapter 1 verse 2 doesn't say anything about don't say Holy Ghost. All it says is that the, the, that the earth was void and formless and the spirit of the Lord was hovering on the surface of the earth. That is what it says there. It doesn't say anything about don't say Holy Ghost or don't say the Holy Spirit. And this same word, a lot of ignorant, let me use the word fools. Because if we're a Christian, you don't want to study, you become a fool. Are you listening? If we're a Christian and you don't want to study, you will become a fool because people will take you for right. And in the end, you go to hell. I'm serious. Because God said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. Because when you don't study, you will lack knowledge. When you don't study, now it's, it's like this way. It's like this. When you don't know a genuine dollar, let's say you don't know a genuine $10, Anybody can show you a fake dollar, a fake $10 note and tell you, oh, this is genuine. And you believe it. Why? Because you don't know the, you don't know the original. But in order for you to know the fake, you need to know the original. Because if you don't know the original, any fake is original. As far as you are, as far as, I mean, you are concerned, as far as you know. Many of us have not spent time to digest the truth. Many of us have not spent time to study the truth. Now let's go to 2 Timothy uh, 2.15. When you read it, King James, King James says, Study to show yourselves approved unto God. Now let me read the New Living Translation. It says, work hard. Work hard. Beloved, studying the word is working hard. He said, work hard so you can present yourself to God and receive his approval. Be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed and who, and who correctly explains the word of truth. Who correctly explains the word of truth. Now verse 16, he said, avoid worthless, foolish talk that only leads to more godless behavior because if i sit down here and all i preach to you don't wear earrings so don't wear earrings so it will take you to hell it's just a foolish talk because it won't take you anywhere what i'm doing i'm actually putting you into a bondage because i am putting you into a bondage that won't take you anywhere because if i keep preaching take your earrings off oh, take your earrings off oh, take your necklace take your ring i'm actually putting you into a bondage because that is not a gospel the gospel of the Lord Jesus is to stop sinning. The gospel of the Lord Jesus is to repent of your sins. Is to repent of your sins. Is to forgive those who have, who have offended you. Forgive those who have offended you. Is to love your neighbor as yourself. Is to pray for your enemies. Is to do good to your enemies. It's not to despise them. It's not because they are not dressing the way you, are, you have dressed. It's not because they haven't looked old. A 25-year-old woman looking like a 60-year-old sister, sister, sister old, old lady. Because they don't want to look that way, you're offended. The Bible says women should dress with modesty. Modesty. It didn't say if you're 20 years, become like a 50-year. It's a modest. Modest. You know, modest dressing is what God requires from you. But you can never understand all these things when the Spirit begins to explain them to you. You know, when you are filled with the Spirit, when you are filled with the Spirit, believe me or not, as a woman, there are certain dress you wouldn't even dare to wear. In fact, you will feel ashamed when even wear it in the home. 
you you will feel uncomfortable wearing it. So you can't even wait. Why? Because you are full of the Holy Ghost. You are full of the Holy Ghost. You know, the Holy Spirit doesn't only teach you the word. Because the Bible says he will teach you all things. He teaches you what to wear. In fact, he even teaches you what to say. The words. Some of the words you are not permitted. When you are filled with the Spirit, some of the words you are not permitted to say it. You know. So, beloved, the Bible says, steady to show yourself approved unto God. Steady. Steady to show yourself approved unto God. Now, 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy 4, 3. Let me, let me end with this one. The Bible says, for a time is coming. When people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. Like the one I'm sharing with you. Beloved. Look at how many people are online now. Look at how many people are online now. If I'm here talking silly things. If I'm here talking rubbish. If I'm here talking nonsense. You see thousands of people watching and listening. And then they'll be sharing. You know, share, 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 share. That is a time we are in now. People. Are not ready for the wholesome teaching. People are not ready for the truth. Though. They are ready for Kwakwanan's stories. You know, for stories. For na 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 yes na mo niaji ni akuvo biaba na meko heaven and ni yameka te me say they are scaring you. They are scaring you. You know when you pay attention and then when you listen to these people carefully. It's always, and then the angel said to me, and then the angel said to me. Or sometimes they say, and God. When you use the word God, you haven't actually said much. But mostly, you never hear, and Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, because this is serious. You can't play with that name. Jesus, Holy Spirit. Jesus, you can't pray with that one. You can't play with it. So in all their dreams and vision, you never hear them talking about the Holy Spirit or Jesus. They say, oh, and the angel. And then the angel said, and then the angel said, Beloved, we are in the last days. We are in the last days. So 2 Timothy 4, 3, the Bible says, For a time is coming. And I'm paraphrasing it. And that time is now. When people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires. And will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. Imagine somebody who is desperate want to hear about a preacher who is talking about a woman covering the hair. That's what they will be searching for. So when they come to your platform, you are not talking about a woman taking your earrings or necklace or whatever. They, they think you are, you, are, you are the one who are flossed. So they are always looking for people who will be talking about take your earrings off. Take your necklace. Then they know he's the one talking the truth. That is the time we are in. They'll follow the things they want to hear. Verse 4 says, They will reject the truth and chase after miles, chase after stories, chase after things that will not help them. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord. When I tell others the good news and fully carry out the ministry God has given you. So beloved in the Lord, that is a time we are in now. People don't want to listen to wholesome teaching. Say the time will come when people will no longer listen to true teaching. But people will find more and more teachers who pleases them. They will find teachers who will say what they want to hear. You see? I remember the last two videos I made. Somebody came on the platform and wrote, Oh, have you go and listen to this man of God? And he put the man of God names 
uh, because that man is somebody who also who 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 is in the same train talking about a woman shouldn't wear this a woman shouldn't wear this a woman shouldn't wear this but he wears a suit i don't know which scripture which, which scripture told him to wear that suit he wears a suit all the time but there's no scripture in the bible say woman a man can wear a suit and put on a tie beloved in the lord we need to follow the voice of the spirit so the main reason why we have a lot, a lot of division, and beloved, it will continue. You know, the enemy is behind this. The devil is behind this. You see, in all this decision, I don't, I don't want to give the credit to the devil. Because God said, my people perish for lack of knowledge. He didn't say the devil. Now, because... People don't want to know the truth. The devil will, will push them to go and look for uh, those so-called so anti-evangelists, you know, and then they'll go and bring people. Uh, and uh, I went to heaven. When I went to hell, when I went to Nsuasi, as I see, I see, a weemu. And they'll be telling all sorts of uh, tales. And they'll frighten you, and then you go and join them. That is not a gospel. That is not a gospel. Taking your earring is not a gospel. The gospel is to receive Jesus Christ. And once you've done that, once you receive Jesus Christ, the next step is to know the Holy Spirit. Is to let him. So the Bible says only those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. So, beloved in the Lord, you can never understand scriptures. You can never know scripture without the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit. So, beloved, I'm encouraging you as I'm encouraging myself. Because I know that I can never understand the Bible without the Holy Spirit. I know. And I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is our teacher. He's our guide. He's our comforter. He's our advocate. He's our paraclete. He helps us, you know, to know what the Father is saying. Like I said earlier on, you can never, you can't explain a book better than the author. It's not possible. You can never explain a book better than the author. The author can explain it better than anyone. The author of the Bible is the Holy Spirit. So for you to know what the author, you know, for you to know the mind of the author, you need to contact the author. Don't assume. Don't presume. For you to know the mind of the author, you need to contact the author. When you are having difficulty in the scripture, you can ask a man of God. But you know what that means? When you ask that man of God, that man of God will explain to you how he understands it. Sometimes, and I've seen that, sometimes a man of God can explain something to you and you can know that they've lied to you. We have seen that. You can know that what they are telling you is not true, but you don't want to argue. So you just say, oh, okay, pastor. Okay, pastor. Don't just take it. Go back home and do research because sometimes the pastor may not even know it. But they feel bad not to tell you anything. But I would rather tell you, I don't know. I would rather tell you, give me time to research than to give you a wrong information. Beloved, wrong teaching is serious. Wrong information is serious. As I bring the message to one end, now let me uh, say a few things. Because if you're if your Bible knowledge is wrong, your faith is wrong. Because you can never save God above the level of your knowledge. I want you to listen to this very carefully. The level of your spiritual knowledge will determine how you can save God. 
So if your level is here, you can never go above that. Doesn't work that way. So when you keep yourself receiving wrong teachings, beloved, if you keep taking wrong information into your spirit, you are preparing yourself to hell, not to heaven. Because that information you are receiving is going to build your faith. It's going to shape in your Christian life. And then, when you are there, you think, hey, I put an earring. Yay, I'm going to hell. It's a bondage. Hey, I don't have scarf today. Yay. Shineke, I'm going to hell. Hey, I've worn a pants today. I've worn trousers today. I'm going to hell. You see that? Now, the information you receive, let's go a just tiny bit deeper and then we close. The information you receive, build your conscience. Any information you build yourself on will build your conscience. And remember, the things we do, it's our conscience that controls them. So once you build those information, oh, you don't have earrings, you go to hell. You, don't, you, you wear earrings, you go to hell. You wear this, you go to hell. Now they build your conscience. And then your faith is turned from the Lord Jesus towards the things that your conscience, towards the thing that has been built in your conscience. And now all your faith in the Lord Jesus has been wiped out and has been supplanted with that thing that they have infused into your brain. That you need to take your earrings, you need to take your necklace, you need to have a scarf before you can be a born again. Now you are not focusing on Jesus anymore. Jesus is not your savior anymore. It is now your earrings that you take them off, your necklace you take them off, the gown that you wear, that is what is giving you salvation now. That's what it is. Why? Because your conscience has been built with a kind of teachings. Beloved, don't just listen to any junk. I call it junk. Anytime you listen to a message, if you want to listen, I, I want to I wanna give you an advice. You want to listen? Okay, take notes. Take the scriptures and ask yourself, how is this vision, how is this revelation, how does it connect me to Christ? How does it link me to Christ? Now, how do, how does, if I take my, my ring like this, if I take it like this, how does this connect me to Christ? What is the link between taking my ring, how does, what does it go to do with my connection with my faith in Christ? Beloved, now the devil wants to build a bondage in your conscience through this kind of teachings. Why? Because they are not from the Lord. They are not from the Holy Spirit. I can tell you that straight away. And I know when you teach the truth, people will come on the platform and will be writing silly things. I don't really care because I must speak the truth. People need to hear the truth. Because Jesus said, you shall know the truth. He didn't say, you shall hear a vision. You shall hear a dream. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. The devil doesn't want you to listen to the truth. He wants you to listen to a vision. I'm not saying vision doesn't exist. I'm not saying God doesn't talk to us through dreams. He does. He does. But not those nonsense ones. That all that vision they have is I went to heaven and a hey, woman, take your ring, go. Take. What kind of stupid stupidity is this? What kind of rubbish is this? When you are, when you're talking the truth, people think that, oh, you are speaking against holiness movement. Which, which movement? Your ring doesn't make you holy. If you don't know. If you don't know. So beloved in the Lord. The Bible says, steady 
to show yourself approved unto God. Get time for the word. Steady, steady, steady. Steady. I want to challenge you. Steady. Reduce some of the time for moving. Use some to study the word. Reduce some of the time on WhatsApp and Facebook. Always be watching, you know. Use more to study. Equip yourself with the word of God. So that when somebody is lying, you can easily know because you know the truth. When somebody is lying, you can easily pick because you know the truth. I want us to pray a few minutes and then uh, uh, we're praying that the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will help us, you know. Mm. The Holy Spirit will help us, beloved. Yeah, we'll